Now, since its release in November of last year, ChatGPT has been making headlines in every industry and sector. For data scientists, it has been a game changer for day-to-day -day workflows. But specifically for Dash, our users are in a unique position because the open source nature means that ChatGPT can train its models on existing poly documentation and community apps. Also, ChatGPT's powerful API means that it can directly connect to Dash and help create incredible web applications. Cool. So the premise of the app is when you, uh, when you enter the website, you'll see an intro screen. And when you hit Let's Go, what's happening is you're presented with two quotes. One of them is a quote generated by a human, and the other one is generated by ChatGPT. And the goal is to essentially figure out which one was generated by ChatGPT. And so if I do some guesses here, you can kind of see this quote was written by ChatGPT and this one was written by Plato. Uh, Plato. And yeah, the idea is that <clears throat> every day, a user who logs into this app will have 10 questions presented to them and they can kind of go through them and see you know, how good they are at distinguishing between human and AI. Um, some interesting things to know about this app are it's using a open source library called Dash Mantine Components. And what that is, is it's essentially a package of front end components that you can plug and play into your app. And uh, I really liked the Mantine Components Library specifically because it had this block cult component, uh, which is perfect for the use case here. Uh, another interesting thing about this app is if you're familiar with Dash, there's this idea of client side callbacks and server side callbacks. And this app is using primarily client side callbacks. And what that means is most of these interactions are being run in JavaScript through the browser, meaning uh, what I had done previously was using server-side callbacks. If I were to click on this button and, for example, click on this button, it would take a couple seconds for it to actually update the state. So by using client-side callbacks, everything can run in the browser and uh, run really fast for the user. And yeah, I think that's the general gist of the app. One thing that's also worth noting is that it's similar to Wordo in that uh, every day if you join, or if you enter the website, you'll get a new set of questions and the state of the game is actually stored in the browser's local storage. And so what that means is if I were to exit the app and rejoin, it would uh, leave off where I left off. And that's how it kind of determines whether or not to give you a new set of questions for the day as well. Uh, on the right side, there is a contextual chatbot that my do domain expert used and that you can use here online to chat with chosen publication, you can switch the context, you can switch to uh, to any other publication describing a certain connection, certain correlation between, for example, thyroid cancer and this, this gene, or thyroid cancer and TSH, TSHR gene. So we chose among those 10,000 publications the most relevant one, and uh, we created a database vector database that stored, stores chunks of text and use them to create the right prompt. So for example, we can ask about uh, the correlation. What is the correlation between the third cancer and TSHR gene? And in few seconds, you can see some insights from the study. So basically, I created this uh, to help my domain expert to get better insights from all of the retrieved text, from all of the retrieved uh, articles without the need to read them all. Uh, my domain expert, Katarzyna, could just ask the questions that she was curious about all right, so what I've done here in preparation for this is I've pre-fed some website URLs already, and all of these have information about climate change. So I figured let's all learn a little bit about climate change. Uh, so as you can see, I've added some web pages, some YouTube videos, some PDFs, and uh, I'll keep the text blank for now, but let's ask it some questions. So let's, let's start with something basic. Let's, let's ask what climate change is. And what this is doing the moment that I click submit is it's first of all, it fetches 
text from all of these different sources, breaks them down into chunks, saves them in a vector store, then it comes back to the query, reads the question itself, and then goes back to all of those sources in an attempt to find the most relevant information, sends it all to chat GPT, and that's chat GPT uh, doing its thing. It's summarizing the answer for us. It, it just told us what climate change is. Now there's no doubt that ChatGPT is here to stay and it's going to continue to change the way data science scientists work, interpret, and analyze data.